Hi, I'm SJ Bradley and I'm going to read today my story, The Stone Chat, which is published in this book, The Alton Towers Liminal Resident Book. Last year I went on a writing residency to Alton Towers and it was really, really good fun and this story came out of that. You can buy copies of this book and the other Liminal Residency publications on their website. The Stone Chat Tan came out into the entrance blinking, stood, white robes flowing, on the brickwork inside the park entrance, not knowing which way to turn. A wooden signpost by the artificial lake pointed four ways. Haunted Valley, said one pointer. This way to the gardens, said another, and another, Nemesis. The final arrow, blank, pointed directly over the lake to the black castle on the other side its stained windows, its towers, its spires. From across the valley came thousands of screams. He thought for a moment of Father Ichabod, of the life he'd left behind. Hello, sir. A man stood behind a rack of four-foot teddy bears. The sound of his voice took Tan to another day. A shopping centre, a man in white trousers and shirt. For a moment, he wondered whether this man also wanted to share with him the secret of true happiness. Two pounds a go, sir. It's a game of skill, not chance. If you can throw, you can win. Tan made the gesture of feeling in his robes for a pocket, but of course there wasn't one. He hadn't had money for years. Out here everything had a cost. They'd been warned about that. I'm sorry, I don't seem to... He wasn't sure but he thought two pounds might be a lot of money. Enough to buy a burger, or a pair of jeans, or a car. He'd once had money, known the value of things. He used to find coins in drain pipes, and in the rejected slot in machines in car parks. Then he'd joined the fellowship, and Father Ichabod had taught them that no follower could know true joy if he had money. All Tan knew was sore feet and exhaustion and being dirty, and he'd wanted joy, wanted it badly, so he'd given the fellowship all his money, moved into the dorm, started going to every single meeting, and waited to start feeling happy. It's on me, said the man. He held out the ball. Three basketball hoops at the back of the stand each dropped into a funnel. Get the hoop in the ring, and this happens. The man threw a ball into one of the hoops. It fell through, rolled along, and a bell rang. Hear the bell and you've won a bear. You could give it to your girlfriend. Tan glanced around at the signpost at the blank arrow pointing over the artificial lake and hesitated. There was a sound, chat 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 chat, like two stones being knocked together. Ought he to tell the man that he didn't have a girlfriend, or did it not matter? That morning he'd walked out of the fellowship, and now he was here, by the mouth of the park, a free man who no longer knew what was normal. What's that noise, he said. Oh, that. The stranger reached below the stand and showed him a tiny bird. A flutter of tiny brown wings, a feathery blush of warm pink. It's a stone chat. The bird made a noise like no other creature Tan had ever heard. The clack 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 of its call was a noise like pebbles clicking together in a dry valley. Peewit, peewit, it sang. It was tethered to a stick by a glinting brass chain. If you really don't want a bear, you can have one of these instead. Any hoop, said Tan. Any hoop, the man agreed. Tan threw, but his arms were too strong and the ball flew over the back of the stand. Whoa, said the man, never seen anybody do that before. In the fellowship, Tan had been a provider. Six days a week pulling a simple mechanical plough across the fields. At other times of year, cutting corn by hand with a scythe until his hands blistered. Clack, 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 chattered the bird. Tan threw again. His second go hit the back of the stand, made everything rattle. Hoops clattered against the boards and the bears jumped up and back as though they were in a disco. Look, mummy, a bird! A little girl had stopped by the stand, her fingers sparkly with candy floss. 
That's right, said her mum, without looking. Now let's find your daddy. She pulled the little girl away. Last throw, said the man. The bird's chest was pink as an azalea. No need for a key, Tan realised. The chain was thin enough for him to be able to break it with his bare hands. He looked at the hoop, focused on the distance, concentrated. There had been no sports in the fellowship, only silent reflection and working in the fields. They had to be receptive in case Father Ichabod wanted to speak. Always had to be ready. Chat, 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 went the bird. Tan stared at the hoop, mentally measuring the distance, and threw. Bounce, the ball hit one side of the hoop, then bounce, the other. Danced back and forth like a sparrow, then went in. It rolled down the funnel, through grey streaks left by the rain, then landed in the trough and the bell rang. Ding, ding. Do you want a white bear or a brown one? Tan didn't answer, just reached silently for the bird. The bird and the stick together were almost weightless, light like kiln-dried kindling. Thank you, he said. Pee-wit, pee-wit, said the bird. A white five-bar gate marked the entrance to the gardens. Lush curtains of leaves. The roller coaster scheme screams faded behind the swish of the grass, the thick flutter of life. This was a green place, all the shades of it. Dark dungeon green leaves rose and fell in a turning sea, revealing paler green beneath, leaves in every shape, almost oval, spite-shaped, six-pointed. The sweet green of the grass. Tan walked on until he found a hillock of luminous moss and dark earth and sat down. Chat, 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 said the bird. It was terrified. Eyes wide. It was trying to escape. Its wings a hail of bullet against his hand. Pee-wit, pee-wit. Wait, little bird. Tan gently curved one hand around it and closed its wings against its sides. With the other, he pulled the stick, but the chain was tougher than it looked, showing itself to be strong as a rosemary switch. Tan's scars were centred. Everywhere he went, he carried the smell of true joy. He reached down to the bird's ankle, holding the other end of the chain, and tried again, but it would not break. I need tools, he said. He looked around. There was a square grey stone on a nearby hillock. It looked like a gatepost top. He carefully put the bird on it and the chain and reached to pick up the stone. Holding the bird under his hand, he cracked at the chain with the rock. Crack! went the rock on stone. The bird moved, bringing the chain out of reach, and Tan missed altogether, leaving a white mark on the gatepost. Chat, chat, said the bird. This time, Tan held the bird down and raised the rock above his shoulder, brought it down with all his strength and heard a crack like flint. Ouch! His index finger was scratched and bleeding. Ichabod, damn it, he said. Pulled the rock away. A necklace of blood ran the length of his finger. Tat, 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 said the bird. Pee-wit, pee-wit. Moving now, but slowly. Tan lifted his hand and the bird tried its wings. They fluttered like autumn leaves in a squall. The, train trailed, the chain trailed behind it. The stick stayed where it was. The bird was free. Go on, he said. Go on, silly bird, go. The stone chat hopped to the edge of the gatepost, singing its strange clacking song into the bushes. Clack, 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 clack. But there was something wrong. It held one claw askew as though not wishing to stand on it. He ought to have taken it further away, Tan realised. Tomorrow the park's team might come again with their nets and their chains and catch it. But as he reached for it, the bird hopped off the stone and fell, landing sprawled on one wing. Chat, 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 it said. Pee-wit, pee-wit. Tan was filled with a feeling of dread, as though his body were filled with swishing seawater. He ought to have taken the bird out of the park altogether. Further away, somewhere into the surrounding fields, set it free on a farmer's land. Once more he reached for the bird, and once more the bird fluttered away, an escaping thought just out of reach. As Tan bent over it, Reaching out, the stone chat got away, made for the undergrowth with a hard flutter of his wood-brown wings 
and vanished, chattering into the trees.